Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name's John Zaglou. Great to have you here on Channel 59.3 B Pond TV and Roku. Some big news. Matt Eberflus is, quote, impressed with Justin Fields during OTAs. We're going to break it all down in just a second. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglou. If you want to watch more of this show, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. If you want to watch more shows from the VPod TV network, search up VPOD TV on YouTube. I want to start today with this. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> this time last year, we have Bears fans complaining and wondering why Justin Fields wasn't taking first-team reps, why he was being left behind by Matt Nagy, why Andy Dalton was the presumed number one starter, and why Fields himself really was not developing. There was no quotes, there were no articles, there were no comments on what he did during OTAs. Nobody even knew. Nobody evaluated him correctly and gave him the opportunity to be evaluated. That too. No one did it. Matt Nagy obviously mismanaged the situation, which we all know, but he mismanaged it even during OTAs. Much different this year. Much different this year. Matt Eberplus has obviously let Justin Fields be the number one. And it's turned out that he's been doing pretty well during OTAs so far now. Here's a quote from a Bears.com article. Bears coach Matt Eberplus has been impressed with Justin Fields throughout the offseason program, but one aspect of the second-year quarterback's game that has stood out most above everything else is his deep ball. Quote, I would say, man, he throws a good deep ball, Eberplus said Tuesday. I'm excited about that. You can see it in the 7-on-7 seven seven and 11-on-11s. We're going to take our shots down the field. He does a nice job doing that, and that's what stands out to me. Wow. Somebody actually knows how to evaluate talent. We all knew about Justin Fields' deep balls, one of the best in college football. Granted, great wide receivers. Made it much easier on him. Good offensive line. There were tons of weapons around Justin Fields, but still, the deep ball itself... Throwing the ball 20, 30 yards downfield, being pretty accurate, arguably. These were things we knew about Justin Fields from last year. And he never threw the deep ball last season. Wonder why. Matt Nagy, again, did not cater a game plan to him. Eberflus went on, talked about the deep ball, and said that as a defense, the deep ball stretches you, quote, when you get stretched vertically and horizontally like that, it always causes stressors on a defense. Translation, having a deep ball, having it be effective, it really helps out moving the ball downfield. The defense doesn't know what's coming. It's going to be better. And that's the positive with this. That's what makes this a good thing. And it makes it even better that Eber Plus is letting Justin Fields be the number one. I love this. Finally, somebody who actually cares. And Luke gets it. Also, Eber Plus talked about this too. And he said, quote, I'm in the quarterback room every morning, and I really appreciate the way he coaches and the way he simplifies it for the players. He's doing a bang-up job in there, and you can see that in the execution on the field. Thank you. Again, an offensive guy who actually knows an offense, who actually will cater to his players. There's a lot of positivity around the Bears right now, and I'm pretty shocked to say that. You know me. I call it like it is, but I'm shocked to say there's some positivity for this team. Again, granted. OTAs. Take it with a grain of salt a little bit, but this is a good direction. Much better than this time last year. And that's the reason why the Bears made the moves, right? At the end of the day, they were unhappy with their direction, coaching-wise and personnel-wise and GM-wise, last season. They made moves. They made changes. For Justin Fields' sake, I still don't think they have enough weapon-wise to help him, but I do know that they're helping him out coaching, and maybe that's Really, what he needs, more than anything, more than even weapons. Good coaching can overcome not as good weapons. Talked about this the other day on this program. Joe Madden got the best out of every player he used. Good managers, good coaches, good coordinators get the best out of decent players. You don't have to be a superstar to put up superstar numbers in the NFL. You don't have to be a household name to do well. In an offense, in a scheme, with a certain coach. 
Look at Sean McBain, Jared Goff. Jared Goff is not overly special. He's probably maybe the 20th best quarterback in football yet in Los Angeles. Pro bowler, 3,800 yards, 30-plus touchdown season. Sean McBain got the best out of a bad pick, really, by the Rams. He was not the right guy to take. Everybody knew it. That first year at Jeff Fincher was horrible, but instead of calling him a bust, they brought in a new coach, got the best they could out of him. Goff led them to a Super Bowl. They lost, but still... It worked for that time. That relationship worked for a number of years till the better quarterback came around to Matthew Stafford and they won the Super Bowl. They knew Jared Goff was not going to get them there. He wasn't going to win them anything. But they knew that if McVay was with them, coaching him, could have a good enough year. With a good team around him and support around him, things could be Very good for the team. And sure enough, it was. I don't think Rams players and Rams management have any complaints about Jared Goff and that era of quarterbacking for the team. Not at all. They did well. I'm not going to argue or disparage a couple of 11-win seasons and a Super Bowl appearance. That's amazing. That's a credit to McVay and partially to Goff for being open to the coaching. Point being, the same thing could be happening here. And that's the positive side and the encouraging side about this whole situation. We don't know for sure how things are going to turn out. And again, this is OTAs. It's still May. (laughs) I don't know how Eber Plus is going to coach in a game atmosphere. Matt Nagy was a great practice coach. Everybody knows that. Hey, we worked on this in practice. Oh, they look great in practice. I did good in practice. And the fact is, in the game environment, in the game situation, there were issues with Nagy. Players even said last year, it all works in practice, but it doesn't work in the game. doesn't translate to the game atmosphere, game environment. Yeah, because these are good practice plays to run. I remember I talked to Dan Hampton, Warren Sapp, legends of the game on my program. They both told me this from a while ago. Teams should be practicing with full pads again. I understand there are health risks, injury concerns now, but... When you don't do that, the plays that you run in practice look amazing. Then when you're actually in the game, everybody's wearing pads, you got somebody barreling after you as a quarterback, you got good coverage downfield, all of a sudden there's a problem. And you're not prepared for it because all your practices were low-key, no pads, you cut them early, you're short, all those things. That's the issue. That's the problem. So, something to keep in mind when it comes to OTAs and these reports. At the end of the day, we have to wait and see if these plays will translate to a game atmosphere. Not just, oh, hey, they look good. Look good against players running around in shorts and (laughs) t-shirts. We don't know. Still, though, I like this report. And it might be a small thing, not a big overarching deal, but... It's better than last year. It's better than where the Bears were one year ago today. This is not going to be an easy year for the Bears. I mean, maybe they do win eight or nine games. Maybe they do contend for a fringe wild card spot. And if they do, that'd be amazing. It'd be a huge relief for them and a good direction for their future. But if they do tank, if they don't do well, we have to focus on some of the positives. And I'm not a moral victory guy. I hate moral victories, but with this team, you're kind of forced to choose them because what else are you going to root for? This is semi... This is a semi-moral victory. At the end of the day, Justin Fields is better than where he was last year. He's a top-picked quarterback. The Bears hired somebody who's willing to work with him and an offensive coordinator who's willing to do the same too. They're giving him first-team reps, which he didn't have a year ago. He looks better, too. Plays will be called to his strengths. We talked about the deep ball. So there are a lot of good things that are going for the Bears and Justin Fields. The fact is, though, still a long way to go. We still need to see in-game play. We still need to see lots of things that we haven't seen yet. So I'm not going to sit here and start sipping the Kool-Aid and being a Justin Fields shill or Matt Eberflus, Ryan Pohl's shill, or Luke Getze one either. But I will say these are encouraging signs, and if you compare the Bears today to where they were one year ago, 
I don't have many complaints. For now. Season hasn't started yet. You know me. <laughs> but season hasn't started yet. I'm evaluating this team day by day based on how things progress and the news that comes out. And right now, we're at the end of May. And Justin Fields looks pretty damn good, according to Matt Eberflus at OTAs. That, to me, is a big win. And again, it's much different than where the Bears were a year ago. That is cause for celebration. Thanks for watching today's show here at Peapon TV, channel 59.3 and Roku. Really appreciate the time. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zagluel. You can watch more of this show. Search up Sports Talk Chicago, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and SportsTalkChicago.com or tune in right here every night at 1030 on Peapon TV. So long, everyone.